Hello, my name is Yejin Do, and I am the Summit Vice President for the Hwarang Youth Foundation. Through this video, I'd like to generally go over the purpose of Hwarang, why we work, how we work, and what you can do to work with us. Now, the contents of this presentation will be about Hwarang, history of Hwarang, activities in Hwarang, committees of Hwarang, and how to join this, this organization. Now, the origin of the word Hwarang was that it was an organization for the physical and mental training of royal families in the Shila Kingdom. This was an elite class of warriors and just trained men who were not only competent physically, but also academically. They were extremely intelligent, they were well-rounded, and they were very multi-talented people who not only had a taste in the arts, but the music, literature, the they had the brains and the bronze, basically. And all of the Hwarang members are expected to learn Korean and American national anthems, the Pledge of Allegiance, and important Korean and American history. Now, I know a lot of the students in the Hwarang Youth Foundation are second generation or even third generation Koreans or Korean Americans or other, other ethnicities as well. We would like to, however, encourage the students to instill a pride in themselves as they work for a Korean organization and how they can make an impact in the community based on their culture and just the foundations of their their lifestyle that the Korean that the Korean way provides. The Hwarang Youth Foundation is a nonprofit organization that seeks to instill pride in its members, develop and train future leaders, and co contribute to the community. The vision statement of Hwarang is to be the global leader in community and humanitarian service. The mission statement is to empower volunteers to serve their communities, meet humanitarian needs, encourage peace, and promote international understanding through Hwarang. Now, the vision statement and mission statement are something that we really emphasize within our members because it is the reason why Hwarang Youth Foundation was started. It was to become global leaders and make a difference in the community to not only meet our own needs, but other ne others' needs as well. We want to continually motivate our volunteers to serve their community with a sense of pride and to, to really understand the reason why they're doing it and that the, that the works that they do make a difference internationally and community-wise. Now, the purposes of Hwarang are to organize charter and supervise service to be known as Hwarang clubs. It's also to coordinate the activities and standardize the administration of Hwarang clubs, to create and foster a spirit of understanding among the peoples of the world, to promote the principle of good government and citizenship, to take an activity interest in the civic, cultural, social, and moral welfare of the community, to unite the clubs in the bonds of friendship, good fellowship, and mutual understanding, to provide a forum for the open discussion of all matters of public interest, provided, however, that partisan politics and sectarian religion shall not be debated by club members. And finally, it's to encourage service-minded people to serve their community without personal financial reward and to encourage efficiency and promote high ethical standards in commerce, industry, professions, public works, and private endeavors. So the main, main purpose of Hwarang is to really organize ourselves and organize our volunteers to have a sense of pride in their work. We want them to learn how to love others and to serve others without finding the need to have um, a reimbursement for their service. We don't want the, our volunteers to really think that they're doing service for their own needs, but the benefit of others. We want to constantly remind our volunteers that what we do and why we work is to represent Hwarang and is to represent our Korean culture as well as uh, just the reason and the purposes of why we serve. It's why we serve and how we serve and what we serve for. And that's exactly what Hwarang stands for. Now, the five beliefs of Hwarang, also known as the five love, are always um, really emphasized throughout the Hwarang Youth Foundation. It is the love of family, love of nation, love of neighbors, love of justice, and love of peace. Our founder, 
uh, Mr. Howard Park really emphasizes the five loves because he believes that serving others comes from within and it has to come with the love of others. It can't be the love of ourselves or the love of money or the love of being recognized for the works that you have done. But uh, if, you wanted to, if you want to be genuine, if you want to be heartfelt with your service and to really change the lives of people around you and globally, it's to have these five loves instilled inside of you, to use this as a basis, to use this as a manual to constantly guide you through your service. Now, the goal of Huarang is to provide members with a sense of identity, leadership, and just a purpose of volunteering. Now, a lot of the times, we have a lot of middle school and high school students who start Huarang because their parents made them or because their friends are in it. However, we want the students to really learn about their identity of who they are and what they stand for while they're really promoting themselves and the, and the foundation as they provide service to others. The leadership attributes that Huarang brings to these high school students are incomparable to what we might think as the classroom setting leaders that we have at school. We are a very large scaled organization and anything that we do, um, it really needs leaders and people to step up and to take initiative and to really carry out the works. And because of that, Huarang has so many opportunities for each and every individual to really show their potential leadership skills and to really grow as leaders as they plan their own projects, to carry out their projects, to really organize systems that will work for the foundation. We also want volunteers to obviously volunteer. And volunteer is a lifelong practice and it should not be just temporary things that people do to gain recognition for a short amount of time. It's really about why we serve and how we serve and what we serve for. Now, the organization of Huarang is as follows. It's the Huarang Youth Foundation. Now, under that, we have the board of directors. And um, the board of directors are in both the... We would say that the board of directors are like the adults as of now. And the president would be obviously our, our founder. And under that, under the president, we, we would have the summit officers. And the summit officers are like myself. We have the summit chairperson, the summit vice president, and summit secretary, summit historian, summit treasurer and summit public affairs officers. We do also have district chair people who are in charge of the eastern, southern, western, northern, and central regions of California. We have under that then we have regional leaders who are generally club presidents who are in charge of a certain region. So a central and cent in the central region, we might have three or four chapters, and one of the presidents will take the initiative and the leadership to stand up, uh, to step up as a regional leader. And as we have meetings and as we discuss our forms and just reports, it'll go through this kind of hierarchy that would uh, minimize the work of the person on top. So basically, we're just trying to tr um, trying to go through as many processes to really instill transparency and to have everyone in within the Huarang Youth Foundation know what's going on. Now we also have the international uh, branch which is, will be covered by another video but in the international branch obviously we have um, we have the chapters of Chapters that were chartered outside of the states. So El Salvador, Guatemala, Korea, Ukraine, New Zealand, Japan, you name it. Like We have, Kwarang is such a big and growing foundation that we have branches all over the world. Now SOS, also known as Save Our Society, is a sub-branch of Kwarang Youth Foundation, or well, the foundation. And it's basically primarily for people who do not have great interest in becoming leaders, but rather they just want to serve. Some people don't want the leadership 
positions and they don't want to feel pressure to even lead other people, then they're not comfortable with it. The The Hwarang Youth Foundation really emphasizes that everyone take initiative and really steps up and tries to take advantage of the situation. Some members are still kind of uncomfortable with doing that and we understand and we encourage those members to join SOS or Save Our Society to really serve the community but without the burden of having to lead other people or to um, take up any positions. Now the history of Hara was that it was founded in 2006 in December with 208 members by Mr. Howard Park. Um, the year as follows, as you can see, like that's when Palos Verdes, San Fernando Valley, Burbank, Chino Hills, Eastland, Redondo, Gateway, Glory, Hancock Park, South Bay, Beverly Hills, Green Valley, Cosen, Torrance, Amherst, East Hills, Sunny Ridge, Fleo, Spectrum, Healers, Give, Horizon, SoCal, Westridge, Sena, Guatemala, El Salvador, Pioneer, Ukraine, New Zealand, Chadwick, Boston, Hawaii, you name it. We've been growing since the beginning. And um, it just, this timeline really shows how much work that we put in and the effort that we put in, it got paid off because our youth foundation has grown so much and we've branched out so far that that it's no longer just a community-based thing. It's a worldwide thing. Now, the club functions are regular things that we have to do and we ensure that everyone does. Now, the first thing is called a summit meeting. And a summit meeting is basically one huge meeting where everyone from the Hwarang Youth Foundation is welcome to join. Leaders of chapters, districts, and regions are required and mandatory to show up to these meetings. We go over financial um, statuses, any, any other reports, any violations that we face, uh, anything, reflections of how we felt through the service of others, any new um, charted, charted chapters, we make sure that they are brought up and everyone is known that they are a new charted chapter. We go over old and new business, and we do so much more that that really shows that it's just a little wrap-up meeting that shows our progress and marks our progress. We want uh, to ensure transparency in all that we do, and by having these summit meetings, we have everyone come together and see what Hwarang has been doing and what we've been working for and how much progress we've made. We also address issues like what changes we should be made, uh, what future events that students and volunteers want, and to really, it's just an event where we bond each other as we discuss the problems and resolutions as well as our progresses. Chapter meetings are within the chapters, the charter chapters, and it should be every month. They go over the business at the summit. If we have a meeting, if we have a summit meeting and go over old and new business, it is the responsibility of chapter presidents and chapter officers to delegate the work and, and the information to the, to the members. Not all regular members will attend summit meeting because they're not mandatory for regular members. Um, but that doesn't mean that the regular members should not know what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Should not know what's going on within the Youth Foundation. And through the chapter meetings, they can go over the business, what any concerns that they have with what the summit is doing and any suggestions that they may have, it may be brought up through the meetings and brought up in the summit meeting. Now, every year we do have a leadership training that's held in the summer where we invite old and uh, previous leaders to come and just explain how to run the foundation. Uh, we are constantly growing and the kids are always growing. We are maturing and aging. And as we do that, there is always a change in the leadership and the change in the flow of the system. And to ensure that all the information gets delegated properly and that everyone is informed, we gather everyone, the future leaders and the past leaders and the current leaders to one open forum. And we really uh, share the experiences that we had as a leader, as well as what a leader needs and what the Hwarang Youth Foundation does, like just the administrative work, um, 
the executive work, anything like that. We just pass on everything and make sure that everyone's on the same page as we start a new term for the leaders. Now, I'd like to go over some of the humanities that we are constantly trying to um, not enforce, but to inform our volunteers about. And the first one is comfort women. It is a very sensitive topic, but we do feel that as Korean Americans, we do, we are viable voices and we do have a say in this matter and in this issue. And by... Um, by getting rid of the ignorance, by educating our members and the community, we are one step closer into uh, bringing justice to what's, what has been cast in the darkness for such a long time. The Grassroot Conference is also an annual Korean American conference that we take uh, part in ever since 2014. We learn uh, ways to become a patriotic leader for our community and our own society. And it really just sees how Far the Korean American community has come and what they've done to really change how we live and and how and what they did affects us now. The Los Angeles Peace Parade is also an annual parade that we take part in, um, and all the members bring their Hwarang flag flags out, the American flag and the Korean flag to stand with the injustice and. It's just to commemorate the Los Angeles civil unrest and we're here to stand for peace as it is one of our loves. It's just to, it's just a fun activity and a fun event where we can really reflect and to bond with one another and to think about how the Korean community affects the just the community around us and how we live and what we live for. Uh, we also make a difference in other people's lives, not only by serving through our theoretical um, theoretical studies, but also um, our medical studies. So we do have eye camps in Latin America, and our founder, along with several members, go down there to really provide a um, service for those who can't pay for vision care. So a lot of the times, these people who live in very uh, rural rural um, places of the countries don't have the health care that they need. And, and by serving others, by going to a mission trip, we can really help them and to really just helps to check up on these people and provide surgery in case they need it, just checkups, treatments, and just to have these people be able to live a normal life because they're under such... Um, harsh circumstances already we don't want to hinder them even further by by their loss of eyesight we also have an eye camp in los angeles where we um, have clinics like we have stand-up clinics for free and a lot of the elder everyone in the the older community they come out and get a free checkup and um, a lot of the times these elderly are the ones who are left um kind of ostracized because they are old and their kids have grown up and they're just alone and uh, by providing a free service like that we can check up on them and we can ensure that the previous generations of the community will not go forgotten and they will not be neglected. We also require a CPR training for all the members. We want all the members to be um, first aid certified so in case that anything happens the members will be able to step up and really just make a difference in another person's life. Now, uh, we go over the basics of CPR. We go over the basics of first aid. We learn about the different laws that uh, prohibit us from serving other people uh, medically and um, how we can do and uh, what we can do to help them. And it's a really great way for those interested in medical in the medical field or any other field to have this knowledge of CPR training and first aid because it always is handy. No matter where you are, it'll come in handy. Now, the Guatemala Library is also something that we've been working on and we've been fundraising to help these kids in Guatemala to have um, a way to really fortify their education and to be able to learn. Because, because we live in a society where education is power and power is what brings these people a, a good living standard. We want to make sure that the future generations don't 
blindly go into the world with no information or no background. We want these kids to be enlightened. We want these kids to be informed. We want these kids to be woke with the situations around them. And by providing a library, knowledge is power, they'll be able to read and they'll be able to learn and study in a way that they can develop themselves as people and future leaders. Homeless outreach is something that we also emphasize because the homeless levels in Southern California are very high. We want to make sure that we help them and help these people by serving food, by providing care, as well as just just being friends with them and be, being able to talk to them because not everyone becomes homeless because of their own um, quote unquote laziness. Some people under circumstantial reasons have um, no choice but to become homeless. And because of that, we want to really reach out to the community where they don't have as much as we do. As people who technically have more than others, I think it is our duty and our responsibility to reach out and really um, touch the lives of other people who don't have as much as we do. Now, environmental outreach-wise, we did this uh, thing called Beautify Western Avenue. Western Avenue is one of our biggest streets in uh, the Los Angeles County. And volunteers, Los Angeles volunteers from different organiza organizations came together to paint murals on the walls to beautify just the old and tattered parts of Western Avenue. We also do this thing called Ferndale Park Cleanup where we go to the Griffith Park and we rake the leaves, we pick up trash, and we try to tidy up the park in order um, to just make ourselves feel better that we are living in a cleaner community and to help have others visit the park and to really enjoy their time there. Recycling is a major part of most chapters. We do try to fundraise through recycling and we emphasize recycling because uh, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of environmental crises uh, crises that uh, we really want to to just point out, and this, this is one of them, and why recycling, um, volunteers not only earn hours, but we fundraise for events, as well as um, become informed about the necessity of recycling. Tree care is also something that we wanted to really um, emphasize because we want to give back to Mother Nature, we want to give back, we want to plant trees, and we want to restore our communities. Um, the next thing is beach cleanup because, because we live in Southern California and we are on the West Coast, we are very close to beaches and a lot of the times um, the beaches are extremely dirty and we go to the beach, we clean up and we have bonding activities as well. Now for community support, we have this event called National Night Out and every year the Hwarang Youth Foundation takes part in the parade, uh, we walk along the streets of Los Angeles and we walk all the way to the Vermont, the Olympic and Vermont police station. And it's just to show the community that uh, we support this, we support the cause that the police department stands for. And it's just a fun way for all the volunteers to really experience how to uh, contribute to a community based event. College Expo is also another event that we do every year. Um, it's held in Orange County and the Korean Daily Newspaper invites various colleges and admission officers as well as speakers that help provide information for students who, who are interested in attending college. And our youth foundation, uh, our volunteers go and we help and guide and um, provide um, provide pamphlets, we pass out things, we pass out water, and we just, while um, students ourselves, we go and listen to lectures as well. The World Police and Fire Olympics, uh, that's also an uh, event that we do annually, and it's not a big event that where all of the Hwarang members go, but a lot of, many of the Hwarang members go and just, um, they, they watch the games, they participate, they have fun, and um, just, the, just the opportunity for the members to really interact 
and kind of talk with uh, people who who are a great influence in our lives. So the 5K run that we do is something that we've done a couple times, and it's where we we all participate in a 5K or a 10K marathon event, and uh, we're able to share um, just just our like our joy for running with others in our community. We do have a Korean festival that we take part in. It is a parade, and it's just to show our patriotism and our love for the Korean culture and where we stand and we come from. The Lotus Festival, it is a fun experience for all the Hwarang members. They get to dress up either in Korean um, traditional like warrior outfits or even um, for females like hanbok, which would be a Korean traditional dress. And it's just to really, again, just touch up on our cultural side and to be reminded where we came from. The KX Festival is also, the KX, the Arirang Festival are also two of the biggest festivals that we take part in. And um, we just help with um, guiding other people, picking up trash, you know, just the maintenance of the whole festival. And we help um, guide the guests through the stage and with their, the waiting rooms. The Korean Spirit or Kyoreyeol is a trip that the Hwarang Youth Foundation members are able to take part in during the summer. They go to Korea and they experience what it's like to be a traditional Korean and to be able to really learn about our culture and um, the basis of our culture. The Vision Concert is one of the biggest events that we have every year, and it's to fundraise for the ICAMS in, in the Latin American countries. And we have uh, Hwarang members perform, we have um, outside guests perform, and we just have this whole really big concert in Glendale and a church, a big church in Glendale, and we invite everyone to join and enjoy the time while making con contributions to a greater cause. The Hwarang Sports Festival is also an annual event that we're trying to start because we want to have the members have fun and we compete in tug of war, basketball, volleyball, and a lot of other sports, um, sports games so that the Hwarang Youth uh, members can really bond with one another while having fun. The charity gala is also something that we have every year and it, it intertwines with our award banquet and the charity gala, because we are a nonprofit organization, it is a way for us to fundraise as we invite um, like really big people like the district attorney, the, the mayors, the just the congressional leaders, and we just invite them and we sit together, we enjoy our time, we enjoy a nice meal, and uh, we award our members there, which ties onto the award banquet. Um, in Hwarang, I think everything, all the time that you put in, it's paid for, and anything that you do, it will go noticed, like you won't go unnoticed. Anything, the effort that you put in, determines like what you receive and a lot of the times this is a, a greater incentive for students who work so hard and to devote their time to to really um, making Hwarang a better place. Every October 10th is Hwarang Youth Day and we've been recognized by the assembly that uh, Hwarang Youth Day is it's it's official like we have a day for because of our contributions to the community, the community leaders have recognized October 10th as Hwarang Youth Day, and it, passed, um, it has been passed at the California State Legislature. Now, before I go on to how to become a member, um, I just really want to emphasize the necessity of committees because committees are a way for you to really enhance your skill set and the field that you're interested in. A lot of the Hwarang members do go to college upon the graduation of high school and because of that we want the Hwarang members to be able to have an insight on the career path that they choose. The committees that they join will make a difference in what kind of careers they take and for example if I were to be if I were to be interested in becoming a medical doctor then I would join the medical committee to see how a hospital functions, what I can do to um, to really make a difference as a student leader and to really just have a taste and insight of what 
practicing medicine feels like. Now, to become a member, you have to visit the huarang.us website. And if you just look at the website, we have a lot of information and all the, the, the vision statement, the mission statement, the purposes, the five loves, everything's posted up there and you will be able to find information about Huarang through there. Now to pe become an official member, you must go through a quote unquote test, but it's more like, it's just like the Korean anthem, the American national anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, and just the five loves, and just the general test about your knowledge behind these kind of things. They do give a guideline or a study guide before, so, and it's not, it's not rocket science, it's not difficult, so I'm pretty sure every member will be able to go through the test. It's not graded, it's not mandatory. The grade, it is mandatory, but the grade that you receive does not determine your, like, your status as a member. It's nothing like that. It's just for, it's just to really have all our members start on the same page and to be able to learn these kind of things. Um, it says you must get at least 60 points on the pop quiz. Again, it's not hard. It's not difficult. And I think everyone will be able to get at least 16 points. Um, if you don't go through the test, you cannot input the volunteer time through your account. We manually log in all the volunteer hours now through the website. And we want to make sure that all the, like, all the members are qualified enough, I guess, to to really join Huarang and to use Huarang as their source of volunteer. Now, if you want to start a Huarang chapter, um, you will need 20 or more members. You have to complete a charter application and report of charter members. And you need to um, charter fees for members over the age of 30. Like someone, a, an adult has to be able to collect the money of of like our membership fees and our t-shirt and anything that we have, we need an adult to manage money. Um, even though the students are very responsible and very good leaders, we still need adult guidance. And this is one of the biggest times where we need someone else, like an adult to take care of the business. The Hwarang Club membership fee is a US dollar of $100 and, or the national currency equivalent if you're in an international branch. Now, to start um, a Huarang chapter, you must establish a framework. The new Huarang chapter should be community-based. It shouldn't be only like school within your school. You should be serving outside of school and outside of just your home. And you need to identify potential members. Of, um, you need to write down the names of Huarang or potential Huarang members from schools, houses of worship, youth groups, or friends and relatives. We welcome all, and though we don't emphasize um, a certain religion, and we don't want a division in foundation because of our religion, well, we do encourage bringing members, like if you can recruit through church, or if you can recruit through your temple, then that's great, and we welcome everyone. Uh, we want to invite prospective members to an informational meeting, and where we, that's when we address all the questions that they have about Huarang Foundation, about the foundation and, and what they would be doing. And anything that they have, any questions or concerns about, it'll be addressed through the informational meeting. Uh, we're going to host a formation meeting and you're going to organize a Huarang Club formation meeting where you can elect club officers, um, just regional events that you want to do and accept the Huarang club constitution and bylaws so that you can really just, just start your chapter from then. You're going to complete all the required paperwork and you need to receive all the proper signatures. You need to attach a list of the names of the club's founding members and return it to the Huarang Club Program Department. Um, the entire certification process can take four to six weeks, but um, it may take even less than that. So. No worries. And they're going to be, there's going to be an installation ceremony where we acknowledge your charter chapter as an official chapter of the Huarang Youth Foundation. And you will start with that. For, with that, you're going to be the founder of a new Huarang chapter. So that basically concludes the informational like briefing. I know it was a very long video um, 
but I want you guys to just realize this is this is what Hwarang is. This is what Hwarang is made up of, and this is what Hwarang stands for. I hope um, this kind of opened your eyes to Hwarang and what it's based on. And just thank you for listening.